Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing the goodness of God, and to do that we'll first be talking about goodness in general. Last episode we went over the definitions of both goodness and existence and concluded that even though we think of them differently, the two are basically one and the same. Today, is every being good? Based on what we discussed last time, it seems that every being is good, since every being exists, and all existence has the perfection of existing fully. Therefore, due to having that perfection, and in the sense that the creations of God reflect his goodness in some manner, we should believe that every being is good. Still, let's take a look at some of the counter-arguments against this position. Some point out that the Bible and common sense both recognize evil. Therefore, not all beings can be good. However, many of these evil things just amount to a lack of virtue which a person should have. The lack of virtue doesn't have any actual substance or nature, so while it is evil, it's not really a being as such. The person himself who lacks the virtue would still be good, in the sense that they exist as a person even if they also have qualities in which they're lacking, like having vices. Traditionally, it's been understood that the study of mathematics doesn't contain goodness, but mathematics exists, or else there wouldn't be anything for mathematics to study. So, some people say that because of this, not all beings are good. However, there are two points to keep in mind with regard to the mathematics example. First, that aside from Platonism, the traditional understanding of mathematics was of a logical existence, not an actual one. So the people thinking of mathematics as not containing goodness were also approaching it from the perspective that numbers had no actual existence, and therefore, as such, weren't beings. However, I think the more important point is this. Even if, like myself, you think that numbers and sets are real, they could have the goodness of existing even if the logical implications of calculations based off of them don't contain goodness. For example, when you add three innocent people to a prison that contains dozens already, there's no goodness contained in that fact. However, that doesn't mean that the people themselves aren't good. In the same way, Numbers themselves can be good, even if the calculations based off of numbers aren't. Next time, what is the true essence of goodness? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.